that is precisely the question. And actually, we've had it answered for us by innumerable past civilizations that say, yep, yep, you know, we're going to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And this has happened at least three times in the last 40,000 years. What kind of a routine, time-wise, how, how regular is this recurrence? Between uh, 11,500 years and 11,800 some odd years, and the variance can be plotted based on what happens to the orbit each time. So well, that to, suggests... You know, self, self-referential, it makes sense. I see. I see, I see. That suggests that most of the solar system is going to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Right? That's pretty routine for somebody to be standing with his chin out, waiting to take a heavy shot. Um... All right, well, there you get the basics of it. We'll come back and, and refine this a little bit more. Mr. Garrell, of course, talks about very few safe places to be on the planet, uh, but we'll, we'll see. Back in a flash. Okay, and we're back with Cliff High. All right, Cliff, so the sun releases all that pent-up anxiety, stress, and frustration. It's been building for you know, 11, over 11,500 years. years. All right. And the Mayans and the knew it, it the Egyptians between did. between 11,500 and some other number, uh, and also the reason that the procession of the ages has, has varied is because that every time it does this, it perturbs the orbits of the planets, thus shuffling them around a little bit, ourselves included, which alters our procession and so on, and slightly alters the uh, uh, level of accumulated um, angular momentum. So the sunspot cycle between each of these episodes varies ever so slight, slightly. But the general, in the in the end of it, it always comes back to these specific fractional part numbers that are the real key important parts relative to the uh, solar uh, to the equatorial and the in the polar spin. Something else that's really key is that it's not possible to observe the sun's uh, poles from Earth in a meaningful fashion and determine this 37 and some fractional part uh, of the day rotation. So the fact that the Mayans knew it either meant that space aliens came and told them or that that was inherited knowledge from a previous civilization that was at the uh, same level of understanding that we are. And so basically every 11,500 years it throws off this uh, energy, shuffles all the planets around, and since we're riding on one of those planets, we get shuffled around to a great degree, and this is what causes the pole uh, flips, both magnetic as well as crustal. And the mechanisms there are, are relatively understood. And it's also uh, likely, in my opinion, necessary in recharging the magnetosphere, which mm-hmm. degrades over, curiously, about 12,000 years and gets mm-hmm. recharged every so mm-hmm. often. It also makes a lot of our um, ancient history make sense, and it also makes a lot of our current history make sense relative to why the powers that be are out there creating all these doomsday, doomsday seed vaults and trying to do all these... Um, well, rest- not only are they are they creating a, the seed vault, especially the one in Norway, I believe, but Google is, is uh, digitizing every book, <laughs> yeah. with a few exceptions, every book on the planet. And then they're going to shoot it to the moon or something, I hear, yeah. So, I mean, these two things are kind of indicative of maybe somebody's planning for something they know is coming. Yeah. Yeah, and they, you know, the powers that be, these various individuals have bought huge amounts of land in, in uh, very high places on the planet, as though they're worried about some event involving water, and that's a predictable part of a crustal shift. If indeed the, the mechanism whereby this would happen is that our magnetosphere is very weak at the moment, it has huge holes in it that have originated just in these last few years, and it was weak before that. It's been degrading noticeably since the 40s and uh, was uh, was hugely degraded from the late 60s onward. We now have holes in it. And as the sun's um, pent-up tension in a magnetic bubble form is blown out from the sun, it will impact the Earth and shift our magnetosphere around. And the problem is the magnetosphere is so weak it won't resist. Yeah, it so made, couldn't it just blow it away and replace it with something new? or ch- Well, it basically will do so. It'll charge it energetically. Supercharge it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but in the process, it'll flip the core of the Earth because Oops. the magnetosphere and the Earth, Earth's inner core are, are um, inter- intimately and mm-hmm. integrally linked. Mm-hmm. What happens to one happens to the other. Mm-hmm. The yeah. Earth has lost 90% of its natural magnetic field in just the last four to five thousand years it's it's that's correct to... but we were already greatly reduced before it started getting to that level Got yeah it. yeah 
And it recharges periodically and coincidentally to about 12,000 years in terms of at least Mm. the ice core evidence. How Mm. much data do we have to substantiate this geologically and other records of, uh, of ancient history? Uh, vast quantities. Too much to just sit here and talk about. We could probably talk about it 16, 18 hours and not even exhaust it. Wow. I mean, that much. It depends on where you want to look and, and what specific level of what science, whether it's ocean science, atmospheric, you know, mm-hmm. geologic, mm-hmm. Uh, archaeological, um, mythological, historical, linguistic, and it, it just goes on and on and on, and it just keeps piling on in these various, uh, actually rather elegant layers. The Mayans and the Egyptians were part of a society that wanted us to find this information out because it's going to come and happen to us, and they wanted to tell us. And well, what are we supposed to do about it? Well, there's the there's the thing. The according to the um, uh, work that uh, Girl cites, that goes to a Frenchman by the name of Flossman, who translated some hieroglyphics, and he includes the hieroglyphics in his books. So you can go and do the translation yourself if you want. And I have some hieroglyphic dictionaries I can recommend if you're interested. But in any event. Uh, people in the past have survived. We know that people have survived past crustal shifts because we know that the crustal shifts have existed. We can find geological evidence of them, and yet here we are, and humans still continue to exist. In fact, there's a great number of us. So we know that this, that in spite of the um, level of chaos and, and problems of the past, in these crustal shifts, humans have pulled through and enough to carry the... Yeah, even forward. 5% will make it. We could. We're like a virus. We don't need much... We've got a petri dish called the carry trade would probably be on the order of ten thousand breeding pairs. That's at 10, it. Ten thousand. So if at twenty thousand fertile individuals, you could probably make the species uh, reconnect. The problem is the level of civilization is mm. greatly diminished at that level. You okay. need several hundred thousand to even come close to maintaining, a, you know, a medieval level of civilization to start from. Hmm. So it's going to be rather difficult that way, and that is a real problem. That's what led me to all of this was why pondering the question. Given the nature of the creativity of humans, why have we not made that step in the, in our uh, incredibly long span as a species? Mm-hmm. Why haven't we made it off of this, this rock? And it's, well, because periodically we get slammed by one of these things that kicks mm-hmm. us back to a mm-hmm. near Stone Age. This may be part of the universe, and that would also explain why there are not hundreds of thousands of Type uh, 1 civilizations. And it may be that all the solar systems go through this, slamming it back, repeatedly mm-hmm. in the same kind of a process, and it's just a natural magnetism refresh sort of a thing of an internal engine kind of a deal. This so, breeding issue you raise uh, brings to mind the story from several days ago of scientists apparently on the verge of making both sperm and eggs human quality from stem cells. In other words, we're not needed anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what they say. And I'm sure that they'll succeed, too, but it's like, why bother, guys? <laughs> yeah. You know, I know why there's a huge amount of work in, in fertility and infertility these past few years, by the way, and that is because sunspot cycles are related directly to uh, fertility of all, all life on the planet, including humans. And, and the uh, Mayans and the Egyptians also encoded that information in there. I wonder if they had to deal with the same kind of mass planetary toxification. I mean, poisoning. No. That, which we are dealing with, and that's why the, uh, yeah. well, the, the estrogen uh, attack on, on humankind and amphibians and everything else is creating all kinds of sexual chaos, as you know. I actually would disagree. I think the sun is a primary cause, the primary yeah. cause, and the level of estrogen, certainly in, in plant-based estrogens in the social er, in the um, infrastructure, is something to be concerned of with. But in general, I would think that it's the the polar cycle of the sun, because the polar cycle of the sun is connected to both the testosterone and the estrogen flow within uh, humans, and it's a 37-day cycle in spite of all evidence to the contrary in any other lunar cycle. And this 37-day cycle is at its weakest point that they've ever been able to measure since Mm. we've been able to measure these kind of things in the sun. And it's been degrading noticeably. The Germans did all kinds of measurements in it in the early 30s and were rather shocked about the level of degradation that they noticed in only six years. And then the war came along and stopped their efforts. In that Is that regard. why so many of the so-called advanced uh, European cultures are not breeding much anymore? Is there any tie-in there? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it also affects all the species. That's why, for instance, we've had the four-year hiatus mm-hmm. in naturally occurring spawn of oyster types off the, coast of the, off the west coast of the U.S. Mm-hmm. They're just mm-hmm. simply not breeding. And a lot of these fertility cycles are directly related to the polar cycles. Very interesting. Very interesting. 
All right, we're uh, about two minutes away from break. Next hour, we're going to talk to Cliff High about the issue of a crustal shift and a massive recharging of the Earth's magnetosphere and what it may or may not do. Some of the scenarios are being uh, put out there. Uh, Mr. Garrell feels he has uh, absolute certainty of where the safe places are, where the safe places aren't. How many days left, Cliff? Um, 1,144, probably, if we're okay. lucky. If if we're lucky. Yeah, we've been lied to so repeatedly by the powers that be that do we trust their calendar or not? They well, were some... the ones that made the uh, mine long count end on that day. Yeah. They could have been, you know, <laughs> screwing around with us. I'm not sure if it was uh, Cotterell or not, but someone said that the Mayan calendar was actually two years too long in our view of it. We've been told it's not. It's actually 2010. It's not 2012. I don't know. Who knows? Kellerman thinks figure. he knows, and and I think his math is probably the better. Who does? Uh, John Kellerman. Oh yeah. And he thinks yeah. it's October or something, uh, 2011. Mm-hmm. And there are a couple of astrological uh, alignment issues that you can factor in there. But the the Pope Gregory went to such great trouble and spent such a fortune on mathematicians in the in the 1500s uh-huh. to make the long count end at 11:11 a.m. on a day whose numbers all add up to 11, which is you know 12, 21, 2012. I see. And 11 is their key number for uh-huh. the for the Vatican as well as the Masons, etc. So uh-huh. they went to some trouble to do it. So I think that they at least have some indication that something's going to occur on that day. That's their best bet. Yeah. And they may know a lot more than we do, because I don't believe them when they say they burned all of those uh, Mayan Oh, please. Records. They didn't burn anything. Yeah. No way. No, knowledge is power. And not yeah, yeah. And, and books? Uh, yeah. Sure. No way. I wonder if the Alexandria Library was completely desecrated or not. I uh, never know. And if there is anything under the Giza Plateau by way of a record of the past... Believe me, it has been removed long ago. <laughs> no one's going to tell us. Yeah, that's right. All right, back another hour with Mr. Cliff High. Do you look at the material at halfpasthuman.com or in the guests section at rents.com. Study up on that, and we'll come back and continue our conversation in just.